Okay guys, so my Jeep's been having a little problem. Uh, it doesn't want to shift from first to second, but in every other gear, it's fine. But it only does is when it's warm. Right now it's idling at 171. And uh, if it's cold, it'll shift normally. And I have ATF in here. A lot of people say you have to have Dexmert or Dextron 3 or whatever. But a lot of people also say they're completely compatible with the ATF. But I'm honestly not so sure because I've been running ATF for the past year and it always shifted soft, softer than normal, but it didn't start getting more noticeable until just recently. So it's still torquey, still, still got the same pep, you know, from a stop, but getting up to speed, it doesn't want to shift from first to second. It will only shift after I go past 25 miles an hour or if I let off the gas. So right now it should have shifted, but it hasn't yet. It wants to stay in first gear at lower speeds, which isn't normal considering when I had my last transmission before I did the 4x4 swap. So I'm gonna pick up speed here. Not shifting yet. Let off the gas at 25 miles an hour. And it shifted. don't let off the gas, I'm gradually going to the next gear, like that. It's not even a shift, it's almost like a slip, but I'm not sure what would be the culprit to solving this problem, because I've tried everything. I've replaced the solenoids, put new transmission fluid in, checked the old fluid, there was no shavings, no nothing. People say you can check the bands, but honestly, I don't see how the band would have anything to do with the gears as far as going forward because bands only help when you go in reverse but um i don't think it's my torque converter um i'm gonna do the fluid change i'm gonna go from atf to dexmerc i'm hoping i didn't drive this thing too long to where it's too late to fix this problem but hopefully i can try that and um Hopefully you guys can help me out and shoot me with some answers because I'm honestly out of ideas besides the fluid change. Other than that, I might need a transmission rebuild, which I really don't feel like spending money on that either. So if you guys got um, any experience with a similar situation, please hook me up. Hey guys, wasn't planning on making a video about this, but sums up with my transmission. So it doesn't shift from first to second. It does, but only when the vehicle is cold. But when the vehicle is warmed up, it will shift, but only when I let off the gas. I've adjusted the um, throttle cable that goes to the transmission. Uh, that could be it still, but I'm gonna replace that, even though I don't think that's a problem. But I'm gonna try and replace that anyway. Um, I got a solenoid kit that comes with a gasket and a filter. I'm thinking maybe the filter is clogged, so not enough fluid is going through. So I'm gonna try that, but I'm still gonna replace the solenoids. And um, if I'm in drive, I'll go from a start, and I'll go from drive to third, then it'll shift, but not all the time. But it's only from first to second, and the rest of the solenoids are fine. So I'm guessing it's not really a problem with the transmission itself. I'm thinking it's uh, something electronic, or uh, maybe uh, one of the seals are leaking, or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the pan, and I'm going to take solenoids out, replace the gasket, and the filter, and I'm going to see if that does anything. So I dropped my pan, couldn't drop it all the way because to do that you either have to move your exhaust or your cross member, which I don't feel like doing either one of those. And you can see my transmission cooling lines is interfering with the dipstick tube, which I can't take that off. And to take the transmission cooling lines, you need a special tool, which I don't have the tool for that. But luckily I'm able to get to the filter and the free solenoids easily. So, and while you're in here, be sure you clean your pan off and clean the little magnets you have. I cleaned the first one, uh, I'm going to clean the second one, which is a little bit sludgy and has quite a bit of shavings on it which also kind of worries me a bit but uh hopefully this will be a quick fix and uh, i get to take it for a test drive all right next thing i'm going to do is replace the filter there's a 10 millimeter bolt here and i believe there's two here and one there and uh, if you can see them um i'm going to loosen these three bolts and then same thing with the solenoids there's a little plastic connector right here and it is plastic 
and it doesn't get hot and cold for the past 20 years, so they have been known to be brittle, so be careful with that. And there's a 10 millimeter bolt you can take that off with, as well as a second one. There's a bolt here. And for the overdrive solenoid, there's a bolt here. And now all the brackets have a different look to them, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. So just go ahead and match up the old solenoids with the new ones. Those in. Put the two holes facing the front. I believe that's how it goes. Okay, now the next thing, take your first solenoid off, just push this little connector back. May help if you take a flathead screwdriver, pry those out with, like that. I'm going to go ahead and do one connector at a time so I don't get them mixed up. Now this should be the one that's giving me the issue. And I don't see anything wrong with the O-ring. Looks fine to me. Maybe it's just the solenoid itself. We'll see. So what I was talking about, see this bracket? Square. This one, it's kind of rounded off. So that's how I know they're different. Well, sorry I couldn't film the rest of the process. My phone ran out of storage again. I don't know about you guys. I'm ready for a GoPro. But basically, I'm going to tell you guys what I've done. So I replaced all three solenoids, the filter, transmission pan gasket, and I put fresh fluid in it. Now, a lot of people have been arguing over uh, what type of fluid you should use. Originally, for these AW4s, you were supposed to use Dexmert. And then ATF4 came out. And uh, that's when uh, Chrysler converted from Dextron to ATF4, like around the mid 90s, like 93, somewhere in there. I'm not really sure, but I talked to my mechanic. He said he can't put ATF4 in here, which is what I put in here. Then I talked to my instructor, and he worked for Chrysler for years, and he said, yes, you can absolutely put ATF4 in here. So the fluid shouldn't be the biggest concern right now. Um, before you guys say, oh, it's probably your cable, which is a common problem on these, you could be right because mine's a little worn out, and plus, uh, seems a little bit too short, too, but um, I'm going to replace the cable, and uh, I even adjusted it like three times, three or four times. I even had my instructor adjust it for me, and it still didn't do anything, so I'm thinking it's not the cable either, but I'm still going to replace it, but um, as far as the transmission goes... I hooked up the scanner, finally got my OBD to work. Uh, apparently this one tastes like a special scanner, even though it's an OBD2, but so such an early model year. Most common scanners nowadays don't read them. But I uh, looked up the codes. There are no codes on the transmission computer module. There are no codes on the ECM itself. So there should be nothing wrong electronically. I'm thinking it's something mechanically uh, inside, maybe my valve body's got a crack in it, or maybe food's getting in somewhere that shouldn't be. And uh, I want to let you guys know too, it only does this when it's cold. So if I go from a stop, and I step on the gas, it will tack out at like three or four thousand RPM before it shifts, and it doesn't shift. It's like gradually goes into the next gear. I mean, you can see the needle on the tachometer do that. Unless I let off the gas pedal, then it'll shift normally, or I can just hold out and like let it shift on its own, which I don't like doing. But my last transmission didn't have this problem. Uh, honestly, I'm not really sure what is wrong with it. We're going to start with the cable, and if that doesn't work, uh, I'm just going to drive it till it stops, I guess. And worst case, I'll just have my transmission rebuilt. But if you guys ever had any similar symptoms to this sort of thing, 
please let me know in the comments because I could really use your guys' help because I'm honestly out of ideas at this point. All right, you guys, got me some Dexmerc automatic transmission fluid. It says right here, uh, for vehicles requiring Dextron 3 or Mercon. Um, they would recommend Dextron 3 for this. And I looked up the owner's manual and it says it also takes this particular fluid. So they're pretty much compatible. So I'm going to go ahead and go this route and see if this fluid uh, changes anything. Because this is made for harder shifting transmissions, which in my case it is. Even though I have brand new ATF4 in here, but apparently it's not made for that. So I'm hoping this is the culprit. If not, I know I have uh, internal damage somewhere. But I'm really hoping that this is going to fix the issue. So I'm going to do the flush real quick and I'll show you guys how to do that. Alright, that time has come. Time to do the fluid flush. So... Apparently, there's a couple ways you can do this. One, you could drain the fluid from the pan and refill it a couple times. You're gonna have to do a couple flushes if you do it this way. You're gonna have to refill and drain it two or three times to get all the ATF out. And you're gonna have to drive it around a little bit, get the fluid worked up. Then by the time you do your final flush, you have to replace your filter. I am gonna do that, but there's another way you can do it too, and that's if you disconnect your cooling lines from the radiator. As you can see, if I can move all this stuff, there's one right there. I think you can see it. Got a weight in the bucket. You see it's dripping. That's good. Next step, you're going to want to start the vehicle, throw it in neutral. And once thrown in neutral, you're going to want to keep a foot on the brake or you're going to want to chalk both your back wheels, which I did because I'm going to have to get out of the vehicle in order to monitor it. So start it up, put it in neutral, and this fluid should start pouring out and uh when it starts pouring out i don't want to let it pour out all the way and i got the transmission line almost at the bottom so five quarts should come out so the line should be submerged hopefully and uh, when it is you'll see bubbles coming out of the uh transmission fluid here and that's how you know all the fluid is ran out and transmission is somewhat completely dry all right here we go Is a 14 millimeter. Not sure if I mentioned that already. Yeah, there's still a little bit of fluid in there. So let that drain out. And I'm parked at a little bit of a slope, so all the fluid should be in the back of the pan, which is what we want. So let this drip completely out. It's not like draining motor oil, you want to get as much as you out. As possible. I didn't flush through the radiator because it doesn't seem like a very big cavity so I'm not that worried about it. I'll just focus on getting the majority of the ATF out and putting the fresh fluid in so I can get my transmission to shift normally at least. But uh, once I do my second flush I'm going to uh, go ahead and replace the filter and uh, replace it again with more fresh fluid and that should get almost all the ATF out. Now granted there might be still some in the torque converter which is fine but if you do two or three flushes uh, should get all the ATF out as much as possible. But um, I already placed the solenoids, so I know those are good. And um, once we're done with this, we can put all this back together, then we can take it for a test drive. All right, now that everything is out, uh, now would be a good time to tighten your pulley belt. And if you're new at this, there's a 15 millimeter, I believe is a 15. Yep, 15 millimeter here and here. You're gonna wanna loosen this up first and once that's loose, it'll provide enough slack to where you can start tightening this tensioner bolt because this pulley actually moves in and out. So, I'm going to loosen this up. 
that. Let's get it loose enough. Should be good. Next thing, might need an extension, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I'm gonna need an extension. All right, went ahead, got me a deep socket because the short socket was too short and I kept hitting the radiator. So you're gonna tighten it to your needs. There's really no specific spec for this. Just get it to where you think it's tight. And I knew it was too loose because every time I hit a puddle, water would get up in here and my poise will stop spinning. So just keep tightening it up. Feels about good. Yeah, it seems about right. Then we're gonna come down here, tighten this up. Perfect. Just fish it in there. There's little, there's little tabs at the bottom that fall inside those slots there. So just put it down in there. Get it to where you need it. And tighten her up. All right, now you're going to go ahead and put your mechanical fan shroud in. Now I cut out a notch so it can go around the fan clutch. So it just fits in like that. So you don't have to take the fan off in order to get the shroud out. I did that a while ago when I cut that notch. It comes in pretty handy, but um, the installation is the same as the electric fan. Just get it hooked up on those two little tabs. Then you go ahead and tighten up your two screws on the top here. Now I had to repair mine once before because old plastic and it's really brittle. Uh, this side broke off again just now so I, you can see where I repaired it. I just took a soldering iron and I re-welded the plastic back together. I'll show you guys how to do that in another video. But go ahead and tighten this up and you're going to want to check your food level. Now to do that, you want to make sure your engine is warm, transmission as well at operating temperature. And uh, you want to put the transmission in neutral and check the dipstick. So you see the car is off, and it's not operating temperature, so the food is a little bit high, but uh, it should be between okay and max, which is right about where I had it when I checked it. But once I take it for a test drive, I'm gonna check it one more time, and then uh, maybe top it off a little bit. But if it says add at operating temperature, then you're gonna need to add another quarter or so. But uh, I'm pretty sure I'm fine. I got some extra fluid in the back in case I need it. So let's put your dipstick back in take it for a test drive we should be all set after that all right another quick update so I've had the Dex Merc for about three months now I want to get a good milestone before I review with you guys so you see here transmission is completely cold I just started it that's the lowest my transmission gauge will go so going from a stop pick up speed I've hit 15 miles an hour yet. It's just perfectly fine. Going up a hill, no slippage. Come to a stop. Take off again. Just perfectly fine. And the transmission is still cold. And as it warms up, it gets worse. But I've noticed with the Dex Merc in here, it takes longer to warm up, and the transmission operates normally at higher temperatures. Before, once it hit 90 degrees, it would start slipping. Now it'll start slipping until about 110, 120 degrees. But overall, it's better, but the problem is not fixed but it still drives. So I think I'm gonna leave it for now. So, I'm not sure 100% what the problem is. I think it has something to do with the fluid, but since I ran it for such a long time with ATF4, I must have uh, burned out my clutch packs. But I'm honestly not sure. So right now, we're at 76.
still shifting normal. Going up a hill. Starting to slip a little bit. Right now we're at roughly 90 degrees. Coming to another stop here. Notice the shift is not as responsive as it was when we first started, and it only gets worse from here on out. All right, transmission to operating temperature. Let's see what we got. Here we go. Now letting off the gas. 25. We now shift. Let off the gas, and it shifted. So overall it's the same, but it's better. So, I'm probably looking at a rebuild, but I'm not rebuilding it anytime soon. Still drives, still works fine. It just doesn't want to shift from first to second, which I'm okay with. But if I let off the gas, it'll shift. So I got it down to the science. Um, sorry, I couldn't give you guys the answer to this, but if you still found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.